Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we are retreating into the nearest corner to cry and suck our thumbs. These are the 10 most intimidating Final Fantasy villains. They might not necessarily be the most famous, but they are the most evil, the most intense, or the most threatening. Let's go. Before we continue, we publish content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of our latest videos. Cypher. <laughs> Cypher is not our main villain throughout the adventure that is Final Fantasy VIII, but he is without a doubt our main rival. Starting off as a fellow student and even party member for a brief moment, Cypher's turn to the dark side as well as his unwavering principles and goals make him an eerie and intimidating force to watch grow and evolve, as deeply rich and narratively interesting as he is. While the series has featured instances of villains causing harm to NPCs or party members, the act of a villain successfully eliminating a summon was unprecedented. Cypher's ability to accomplish this feat coupled with the audacity of his actions elevated him from a conventional antagonist to a truly powerful force. Seymour Guado. So, we meet again, Lady Yuna. I yes? You look troubled. Is there anything I can do? As the secondary antagonist in Final Fantasy X, Seymour Guado may not command the same attention as the game's primary villain. Nevertheless, his actions, particularly in the second act, establish him as a more grounded and disturbing type of antagonist within the series. Quiet, collected, and borderline creepy, watching Seymour's fixation on Yuna as he seeks to forcibly marry her and harness her power to transform into the monstrous entity known as Sin is incredibly uncomfortable. While his overarching ambition is driven by the thirst for power, there are hints that Seymour may harbor genuine feelings for the summoner, which, need I say it again, makes it eh, so much more creepy. His disregard for Yuna's autonomy and his willingness to manipulate and coerce her into fulfilling his desires underscore his status as a deeply unsettling character. Yako. <laughs> X Death. X Death's design as a towering knight may not initially strike players as particularly distinctive or menacing. However, it's the chilling revelation during the second visit to Castle X Death that truly cements his intimidating nature. As the illusion shatters, the castle's true form is shown. Previously assumed to be brick and stone, the grotesque structure is revealed to be made entirely from the bodies of the fallen, some of whom are still clinging to life. The macabre imagery, though somewhat constrained by the graphical limitations of the time, effectively conveys the depths of X Death's depravity and malevolence. Of course, with a bit of creepy music to help things along. This harrowing scene serves as a stark reminder of the villain's unfathomable cruelty. What a moment. I mean, it's hard not to be intimidated when you're standing on someone's face. Barnabas. <laughs> Barnabas from Final Fantasy XVI exudes intimidation through a combination of imposing presence, cunning intellect, and ruthless ambition, much like everyone on this list. The difference is he's also very sexy. That's not important, but it's, it's out there now. Barnabas called me. His commanding demeanor and formidable abilities instill fear in both allies and adversaries alike. As a key figure in the game's narrative, his dark charisma casts a shadow of uncertainty and danger over the world of Valisthea. As one of the most powerful warriors in Valisthea, it's scary how apathetic and depressed he actually is, even appearing bored. This combination creates a truly compelling sort of evil. Alone in your plight, the chains of volition shackle all of mankind, but there is yet cause to rejoice. For the Lord in his mercy has taken pity on his flawed creations. Genova. While Sephiroth stands as the primary and most iconic antagonist in Final Fantasy VII, Genova serves as the catalyst for the game's events, thanks to its mutative influence. This extraterrestrial predator, capable of consuming entire life forms, carries the burden of countless species' demise. Its unsettling ability to transform into the dominant species of any planet it lands on is particularly disturbing. 
Genova cells play a pivotal role in empowering the soldiers of Final Fantasy VII, amplifying their abilities. However, this power comes at a cost as Genova's presence twists and distorts ordinary humans into something beyond recognition, for better or worse. Let's be honest, worse. Some argue that because it's Genova cells being manipulated to do evil, Sephiroth isn't the villain of Final Fantasy VII at all. It's simply Genova, the Emperor. It's terrifying when a villain is complicated like Sephiroth or nuanced like Cypher, but when it comes to the Emperor from Final Fantasy II, his actions lack a layer of motivation beyond a desire for world domination. That's almost scarier. His reign of terror leads to numerous casualties and widespread devastation. He just wants to watch the world burn. The most intimidating act comes upon his demise, when he divides his soul into two halves. The dark half descends to hell, where he overcomes Satan and assumes rulership, while the light half ascends to heaven. There, he hints at vanquishing God and taking control of paradise, suggesting a complete subversion of divine and infernal authority. Isn't that the craziest sh you've ever heard? Let's move on. This guy's cooked. Hojo. <laughs> <laughs> An intriguing development, this new mutation. A man who takes great joy in torturing creatures, showing glee and passion from the suffering of others, that's a guy you don't want to be around. Hojo's fixation on the promised land and the ancients has warped his once brilliant intellect. Now, he's wildly unpredictable, capable of any deed. His torment of Aerith, particularly regarding her mother's demise, showcases his unraveling psyche. This instability reaches new heights when he chooses to experiment on himself, resulting in a physical appearance as terrifying as his inner turmoil. Hojo's descent into madness is starkly evident, and his actions are driven by obsession and unchecked experimentation. His history gets darker and darker the more you learn, and as this game is still pretty fresh, we'll do our best not to spoil it. But let's just say one thing. Eh, f*** you, Hojo. Love from Mojo. I didn't mean to do that. Henceforth, you shall be Red 13. Shall we then? Sin. Within the first 10 minutes of Final Fantasy X, we get the opportunity to see our main enemy decimate a home and kill all of our loved ones. This makes every return visit from Sin feel like the nuke sirens are going off. Sin is just inherently terrifying, an entity of immense destruction against which conventional efforts prove futile. Attempts to combat it often result in defeat, and even the costly method of defeating it merely banishes it temporarily before its inevitable return. Moreover, Sin has been manipulated into a tool of religious oppression, enforcing Yevon's control over Spira. Its cyclical nature and the religious exploitation of its power compound the terror it instills, perpetuating a cycle of fear and subjugation within the world of Spira. There is no more spine-chilling moment than hearing someone scream, SIN! My advice? Run. Sephiroth. You take one, I'll take the other. As the primary antagonist of Final Fantasy VII, Sephiroth stands out as one of gaming's most iconic villains. Renowned for his ambitions, dramatic final metamorphosis, and the pivotal murder of Aerith, Sephiroth strikes fear through his ruthless pursuit of power. It's not just his physical transformations that terrify, but his calculated schemes. His singular focus on power, demonstrated by the summoning of Meteor to ravage the planet, reveals a chilling willingness to sacrifice anything for his insatiable quest for supremacy. 
The guy wants to be a god and that's dangerous to go up against. Also, he almost killed Mario. <laughs> Kefka. In Final Fantasy games, it's a common trope for villains to aspire to world destruction, whether as a means to an end or an end in itself. However, it's exceptionally rare for them to actually succeed. In Final Fantasy VI, the antagonist Kefka achieves just that, altering the game's trajectory after its midpoint. The latter half unfolds on a dying world under Kefka's tyrannical rule, where he ascends to the status of a god. His maniacal demeanor, insatiable thirst for violence, and eerie clown-like appearance combine to create a character who is truly terrifying, even within the series' standards. His creepy 8-bit laugh still strikes fear into my heart 30 years later. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Mojo Plays and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos.